Although interest has surged in the relationship between architecture, urban planning, and urban health in the last two decades, the nature of this relationship remains poorly understood. In collaboration with the American Institute of Architects and the Clinton Global Initiative, we have launched a 10-year project to better understand the link between health factors and urban form. This project marks the beginning of a new era of urban health research at MIT. In this initial phase, we detail key health outcomes and their relationships to various environmental, spatial, and population factors in a workshop with architecture and planning students. In this workshop, students researched eight U.S. cities, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Houston, Minneapolis, New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Collectively, our research reveals startling gaps of communication and knowledge between planning initiatives and urban health problems, shattering three widely held ideas about urban form and health. First, our research dispels the popular argument that automobile-dominant city form is the cause of many health problems. Despite the tremendous motorization of America since 1950, we have seen an increase in U.S. life expectancy of 7.4 years. Just as we would not assert that cars increased our lifespan, we cannot assert that our rising health troubles are due to car culture. Secondly, our research challenges the notion that people in dense urban areas are healthier than those in suburbs. In fact, a recent economic study found no evidence that suburban sprawl causes obesity. Rather, it finds that obese people choose to live in the suburbs. This study reveals the basic problem of sociological research. Correlation is not causation. Finally, we did not find that health initiatives across cities conduct rigorous and timely cost-benefit analyses. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend a minimum of 150 minutes of aerobic activity weekly. Yet active design guidelines and other soft policies, such as encouraging stair climbing instead of elevator use, are trivial contributions to aerobic activity, and thus will not yield significant health impacts. Instead, more reliable and meaningful research is needed to find ways that design can improve urban health. In order to make recommendations across cities, we placed high value on comparative data and metrics. We started with AIA's ongoing case studies on best practices. Then we compared that list with the Clinton Global Initiatives Group of 40 global cities marked for climate change action. Finally, we made a selection of cities that intersected both groups while capturing geographic, climactic, and historical variability. Using county-level health data, we invented original mapping techniques to envision comparisons across cities. These mappings are called metropolitan transect charts, showing rankings for each city that cover health factors, such as percentages of obesity and childhood poverty, and actual health outcomes. By stacking these negative factors with higher bars representing less health, counties can be compared within and across metropolitan areas. The chart shows the eight cities ordered by population size with the largest on the left. Within each city, counties are ordered by distance from the center with the most central county on the left. Inner suburban counties directly adjacent to the central county are distinguished from outer suburban counties. For comparison, the worst ranking county in the state is included and shown as a blank bar. The metropolitan transect chart reveals three previously unseen relationships. First, the vast majority of metropolitan counties, suburban and urban, are healthier than the worst parts of their states. Second, the counties show tremendous variability stressing the need for geographically specific health policies that are informed by spatial analysis. Third, we found that 83% of the inner suburban counties are healthier than the central city county or outer city counterparts. This striking discovery calls for more research on the health divergence between suburban and urban counties in American cities. 
Using this county level analysis, we then examined each city. One example is the city of LA. LA's biggest health problem is air pollution, especially downtown, which is caused by the extensive highway and road network combined with the basin topography of the area. Harmful particulates in the air increase the risk of various conditions such as asthma, lung cancer, cardiovascular disease, birth defects, and early death. We found the poorest health outcomes in the areas adjacent to downtown, which have the highest levels of particulates in the air, over 10 times the EPA standard. When these areas are graphed according to demographic and health factors, we find a correlation between air quality and socioeconomics. These areas of increased poverty, higher percentage of minorities, higher asthma rates, and higher incidence of low birth weights all match increased levels of air pollution exposure. Yet these areas are where the city has proposed planning initiatives that increase population. Numerous transit-oriented developments, or TODs, are being constructed in LA's most toxic air zones. We graphed the top 10 planned TODs according to their exposure level of ozone and particulate matter, traffic, size, and cost. Out of 10 projects, only two are located in safer air zones. These projects will increase the number of people exposed to air pollution, putting more people at risk for particulate-related diseases. Unfortunately, LA planning has failed to consider these air quality risks in their long-term planning. These are some of the initial findings from the first workshop of the Health and Urbanism Initiative. Going forward, research will focus on a multi-scale design research approach with the intent to deliver useful guidelines, metrics, and design strategies to be applied in one chosen city.